Have you ever wanted to add a motor to a hinge joint in Unity and expected this, but ended up with this? In this tutorial, we're gonna go over how you can add a motor to your hinge joint and get the results that you expect. And if you're like me, you like skipping over all the videos and you want the code, the code will be linked below. Feel free to use it however you want. Now that our empty scene is loaded into Unity, we're gonna create a 2D object, sprite, capsule to represent our character. So we're going to name a character. Also, we're going to add a component rigid body 2D and box glider 2D so that it interacts with our physics engine. We're going to freeze the rotation in the Z axis so that whenever our motor that we create later interacts with it, it's not going to make it fall over and we can control the motor instead of making the character freak out. So we would also like to create a 2D object sprite square to represent our floor. So I name it floor so we know that that's the floor. Move it down a little bit and then scale it up just so it takes up the whole screen here. Also going to add a box collider to this so that our sprite can fall on top of it. Cool, our very basic scene runs. That's, that's a good sign. I went ahead and created a simple stick PNG sprite here. And all it is is a very thin stick, huh. hence the name. Um, if you wanted to, you can use whatever you want here. I just wanted to give it a little bit of color so you know what we're gonna be manipulating the most. So we're gonna select it, open the sprite editor in the inspector pane. In the top left window of the sprite editor, we're gonna click the drop down and go to skinning editor. This will give you options for the bones and everything for the sprite. So make sure it's selected, which you can tell by the orange highlight. Click create bone, and we're gonna zoom in. Unfortunately, I don't know any way to make it even and like perfectly even. So we're just gonna have to like do the best that we can and create a few bones in order to make it for the most part, straight. It's really hard to do. Once you're finished, you'll see that the bone likes to follow your mouse. You can right click and it'll go away. As of now, the bones aren't really affecting the sprite in any way. They're kind of just hovering above it. So we need to go to auto geometry and click generate for selected. For the most part, the default settings here are good. If you want to add it more detail, you can you can just pull these up and then click generate again and it'll give it a little bit more detail. It, it doesn't really matter. Being a 2D game, it's not going to affect performance that much. And then we'll click apply. We can close this window. Now that we did that, we can pull our stick into our scene. And if you look, the bones we just created, they're not there we have to do to get them to show up is add a component and it is a sprite scan and then in the sprite scan we're gonna have to click create bones and look there they are there's our bones if you look in the hierarchy window under your stick you'll see that each of these bones are nested under one another I don't like the way this looks so I'm going to highlight them and drag them back under the stick itself to me, this looks a lot better. It'll still function the same, don't worry. Now that they're all selected, we're gonna add a component and we're gonna add a box collider to D. Your box colliders might not be perfectly straight. This is due to the fact that if you don't get your bones perfectly lined up, they might be a little skewed, as you can see. But for the most part, that's okay. Now, in order to make this work better, we're gonna to have to go one by one through these bones and make them cover up just the, make the box collider just cover up the bone that it's supposed to be manipulating. Make it a little bit wider. Do the same thing for the other three bones. So there you go, if you look at them all, for the most part, pretty close to one another.
Doesn't have to be super perfect. Okay, so we're going to select them all again. And now that we have our box glider, we're going to add a hinge joint 2D. And this might be the real reason people are tuning into this tutorial. But I just wanted to give some background so we know how we got here. All right, so with the hinge joint, each of these bones has their own hinge joint, but they're not connected to anything. So again, we're going to have to go to each bone and minimize rigid body. We don't need that right now. And the connected rigid body for bone four is its connected closest bone, bone three. So we're gonna drag bone three into the connected rigid body. For bone three, same thing. The closest one is two. And for bone two, we're gonna connect bone one. All right, let's click play and see what happens. We're not gonna connect bone one to anything. There we go. It's really flexible. So what I wanted to do was to be able to manipulate this stick or rope or whatever I have here. And if you look, my idea was to simply rotate the Z axis. Oh. And that does stuff like that, which does not make sense to me. Why was I doing that? After doing lots of research, what I learned was the transform, whenever you manipulate this in Unity, it's essentially teleporting. I know that doesn't really make much sense. However, whenever I go here and I manipulate the transform and the Z-axis, I'm essentially telling this, this bone or this game object to teleport to say 25 or 19. It's, I'm just telling it to try to teleport there every time instead of simply moving. And whenever you use code to do this, it does the same exact thing. What I learned from just clicking buttons and messing around with it is if you use a motor, I assign the motor a speed here. I need a negative since we're going backwards. It's, it works. <laughs> Lack of better terms, it works. It's not trying to teleport, it's just applying a force to this game object. Let me go back to zero. No force. Go down under it. And we can go down. Negative 100 goes up. Now that we know to use a motor and manipulating the motor speed instead of the transform. How can we take this to code? This is something else that I couldn't find. So we're going to learn together. We're going to create a new C sharp script and name it stick controller. controller. And we're going to add this to the bone. We're going to choose bone one to get the controller script because it's going to serve as the base for our sticks movement. So any way that we want to rotate the stick or this first bone, all the other bones will follow since they're connected via the hinge joint. Your game may use a different way of, you know, different idea. However, for the sake of simplicity, we're gonna do it here. So let's open up Visual Studio. Now that we're in Visual Studio, Let's create a public float and we're going to name it stick speed. And we're going to give it just, just a random, we'll do negative 100. So negative should try to lift the stick up. We're making it public so we can change it in the inspector. We also have to give it a hinge joint 2D. And we're going to name it hinge joint. And we have to give it a joint motor 2D as well. We're we'll name it motor. Cool. So as you can see, these aren't assigned to any type of motor or hinge joint as of yet, but we need to do it outside of these methods here so we can use them in other places. So if we declared it in the start method, it would give us an error if we tried to change it inside of the up 
update method. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I'm very new to all this. So inside the start method, so whenever the Unity first loads or the game first loads, we're going to have to assign hinge joint and tell it to find a game object. Click a component, hinge joint 2D. And then we're also going to have to make the motor equal to the hinge joint because uh, hinge joint dot motor because the motor kind of lives inside of this hinge joint for lack of better terms and then motor dot motor speed equals stick speed All right so this is the speed that we want to move our stick and we're giving it to the motor and for some reason something that got me very confused when I was doing this. I thought it was complete here. However, you have to assign it back to the hinge joint. So hinge joint dot motor equals motor. So the motor that lives inside of the hinge joint that we created earlier has to get the motor that we just changed the value of. So we're going to save that, go back to Unity, and when we run, the stick should have whatever speed was assigned here. So there we go. Boom, it's trying to move up. Now we pause it. Go down 100. There you go, it's trying to go down. Cool. And there are a bunch of different use cases you can do with this. So for a quick example, my bone here, we saw that this wasn't connected to any rigid body. I'm gonna assign this to my, my character here somehow then get renamed. And then I'm going to move the stick to be stick to be on top of our character. And then now we're going to not use limits on there so this back stick can move freely. Gotta assign it a speed, which I forgot. We'll go crazy 250. Boom. He's now pole vaulting away. To close out this lesson, we're gonna give the stick a better use case. Say you wanna change the direction on the fly, or you have a tire that you want to assign a force on the motor to go forward or backward or anything like that. Doing it the way we have it now is annoying because we have to go to the inspector we have to change the value, we click play, and then nothing can update once the game is running. So let's go back to C Sharp. We're going to use Unity's input.getKeyDown methods because that would be the quickest way and easiest way to get this implemented with a simple key press. A better way of doing that would be Unity's new input system. If you want, comment down below and I can try to make a, another tutorial, probably worse than this one, to try and teach how to use that because that was a lot of fun to learn and I think everybody would enjoy using that. But for the sake of time and the sake of simplicity to get this motor working, we're going to use the input.getKeyDown. So we're going to make an if statement, input get key down and then we're going to use the w key here so w is up we're going to assign the motor dot motor speed equal to negative 100 and then again in order to assign that speed back to the motor we're going to have to tell the hinge joint hey this this is my motor and this is my motor and I'm going to use it. Cool. So we'll do the same thing for S. We're going to copy that, paste it, change to S and change it to a positive 100. We're going to save that out, minimize here and run it. See what happens. Right now, we'll look at our bone. Stick speed is zero. When we press W, 
it lifts up. And we press S, it goes down. There we go. Obviously, you're going to have to do a lot of tweaking in order to make it work for your use case. But that right there is how you assign a motor. And for instance, you want to make a game where there's a guy stuck in a pot and you want to have him control his movement with a hammer or make a jousting game and the transform, changing the transform of the motor wasn't working for you. Hopefully this helps.